Hey Spurs fans, welcome back to another episode of the Spurs Roundtable powered by Project Spurs. I am Jeff Garcia and joining aside me is Aaron Prine. Aaron, the rodeo road trip is over. Yes. Thank but, goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Thank goodness. They go four and five, yeah. but losing well, the, the worst rodeo record in franchise history. They were 0-4 after the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. They've gone 2-6 and six since the All-Star break. And to make matters worse, when was the last time you ever heard the Spurs having a players-only meeting? Yeah, this kind of sounds like a New York Knicks team, not a San Antonio yeah. Spurs squad. Something is up, so right off the bat, what is going on with this team? I think it's all mental. I mean, you have the same squad as you did from last year. You had too many questions early on in the season about apathy, about not giving it 100%. You had the injury issue, so I think it's really just a matter of confidence because they know they can be great. And they know they can be elite and the best again, but I, I just really think it's between the ears. Yeah, you know, and speaking of between the ears, it starts and begins with Tony Parker. Yep. Now, if you're going to look to one player on this team, it looks like TP9 may be the one that needs to get it going. Yeah. Now, he has an issue with the hamstring. But and it's supposedly, like, supposedly yeah. yes, and we know the Spurs. If somebody's injured, especially one of the big three, they'll hold him out. But right. he's still out there. He's not the same TP we've seen in years past. That quickness is gone. This year, his numbers are gone. I mean, during the rodeo road trip, there was one point where he was averaging six points, I believe four assists, yeah. shooting twenty six percent. I mean, what is going on with this guy? Well, you know, the, the quickness and explosion is actually still there. That flat-out top speed that we're, we're used to seeing, that's gone. That's not, that's not coming back. But we see him at times have flashes of, of old Tony Parker, or Tony Parker of old, I should say. And he can get into the lane, but he bails out. He's not looking for what has made him successful in the past. He's, his decision-making is questionable. He looks flustered. Right. And he's even said as much. Yeah. You know, you know, he was, at least vocally, on his uh, website, he's still predicting this Spurs team to finish four, at least. Yeah. But that, well, that's a tall task ahead of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, looking alone at March, uh, I mean, Spurs since 2010, 2011, they've been 46 and 15 in the month of March. But you're looking ahead, you got top, you have uh, the top three East teams right. in the, for, as far as seeding is concerned. And then they also have Memphis OKC, which is on a roll, yeah. and Dallas twice. Yeah. So I don't think Memphis or uh, March is going to be that easy of a climb. Right. And then you have also April. I don't mean to cut you off there. No. Actually, I did. Uh, <laughs> but you have Golden State, Houston twice, and then you have three teams fighting right. for the Western, the final spot in the Western Conference I playoffs. Wanna go, I want to go back to TP, though, real fast before we continue going. It begins and ends with TP for this team. Right. Now, he's not penetrating like we're used to. He's not kicking out. And you're seeing him have an effect negatively on the team itself. Looking at the three-point percentages this year, yeah. they have gone down. Now, look at the top shooters, okay? Marco last season shot 43% from beyond the arc. This year, 37. Go with Bonner. 42 last season, 35% this season. Green, 41% down to 39%. The list goes on and on. The yeah. three-point percentage is down. They, they, they're they just struggling on offense. I, I mean, I guess the question now is, so what is the answer? If TP isn't doing it, who can you turn it's, to, Corey it's Joseph? Got, unfortunately, TP is the problem, the main problem, but TP is also the answer because he has to be able to get back to what he was doing. Popovich even said as much as himself, and it's not just the three-point shooting that's down. They have three areas that they really succeed from. If you look uh, back at their the recent successful offensive teams, the three-point shooting at the rim and then the, that mid-range shot, about 11 to 19 feet out, all three of those have drastically changed this season. They're still scoring in the paint, but it's about six to seven feet out further. They're being forced to let go of that shot a little bit sooner, or right. a little further away than they're used to. 11 to nine, uh, 19 feet, right. they're more contested. It's later in the shot clock. The ball's on the floor more. Right. And it all starts with Tony Parker now, not being able to do what right. he's able to do. Now, it's not just Tony it's Parker. It's not just Tony it's not Parker. Just, I mean, he is a big uh, reason why right. maybe the Spurs are in this situation. But like Boris Diaw, his shooting fell off a cliff. I mean, what happened to him? His whole play has fallen his off the cliff. His whole play is off the cliff. Kawhi Leonard, granted, okay, I give him the benefit of the doubt. He yeah. has a hand injury. But during the rodeo road trip, there was a point he was just averaging six points a game yeah. and taking – what, shots that I have no reason why he's taking shots. Is he's he's having the same issue as Parker. He's not being as aggressive as, as we saw him last year, especially in the playoffs. He's not attacking the rim. He's settling for that that turnaround jumper, that fadeaway jumper. He's gotten real happy with that, trigger happy with that mid-range shot. Yeah, it, it, you know, sure they did win two games to close out 
the rodeo road trip. But, but even then, they were so-so. You're looking at a Sacramento team. They were not playing with DeMarcus Cousins, and they struggled. They had to come back. They had to come win. back on that one. Now, Phoenix is Phoenix. They blew them out. Uh, yeah, they're, they're in one of the worst free falls you'll ever see. Yeah, they're, so there's that. So have they turned the corner? Is this it? I think with a team this prolific, as much struggles as they are having, I think the only time you can even with confidence say they have turned the, the corner is at the end of March, and they had success. But I thought the rodeo road trip was when they come together. This is it. You know, they gel, and it looks like they really haven't. And Danny Green even admitted. Well, he said, what he said, he goes, this team is not the same happy team from last year. Is there a thought? Is it starting to creep into Spurs fans' heads already that if they continue this play, the postseason may not even be a factor. I mean, look what happened uh, during the 0-4 uh, start mm -hmm. after the, um, the All-Star break. Uh, Express News writer Roy Bragg, he wrote an article just preparing Spurs fans. Yep. Hey, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, they might not even play the, in the postseason. If you're looking at standings, yeah. just standings alone, and you're not thinking about what teams but are the involved, backlash, though, they are, I know. The, the backlash of that article. I sent Spurs fans, at least on Twitter, I mean, you haven't seen it go on on Twitter, uh, <laughs> just out of a firestorm. I mean, is that an indication that maybe Spurs fans are a little nervous too? Well, they've been living in a perfect this is utopia of basketball for the last decade and a half, two decades, and all of a sudden, you know, that, that end is nigh. It's coming. That rider on the pale horse is there. <laughs> that Tim Duncan era is almost over, and they're starting to see glimpses of it, although even he's well, the best he, player he's, on the floor. He's playing the best right but now. But he's yeah. going to be gone one day. Then the, the Tony Parker that we kn knew and loved is what he could do. He's going to be gone. Manu Ginobili, it's all, it's all going to come to an end. So when somebody goes out there and says, hey, this might happen, of course there's going to be a backlash because they don't want it to end. Right, yeah. It's first fans have been spoiled. But... No, nevertheless, they're sitting right now in the seventh seed right now. Right. Technically, if you want to be technical about it, if they get a string of wins right now, yeah, they can catch they're, up to Portland. They're not, I mean, that, they're far not back, that far back, but the competition it. is incredible. But they dug themselves into a hole. Let's just say they go off on some crazy win streak. You know, right. those losses that we saw to Detroit and San Antonio, you know, giving the layup yeah. up to Brandon Jenny, is going to come back to haunt them. It, it's a situation now where the Spurs, they got to have a sense of urgency now. Right. And... I think, if anything, with the rodeo road trip, yeah, it wasn't a great time, the four and five, but there was definitely a recognition there as a, hey, we're in, we're in serious trouble, and we only have 20-so games left in the regular season. Uh, we got to get it together. So maybe the turning point, we're not going to be able to see it until there's some time behind us. Well, well the good news is they're, at, they're coming back to San Antonio. Right. They're going to have a few days off. They don't play again until Wednesday. But yeah, but that can also Sacramento. work against you because when you're struggling, the last thing you want to do is take some time off. Yeah. They, they finished, before they went into the All-Star break, they won those two games, had a big comeback against Indiana. Then they're, they don't play for a week. Then they come back. They start playing again. They look terrible. Yeah, hopefully they some, want to be out on the floor. Hopefully some home cooking will work in their favor. I mean, yep. yeah, they have Sacramento to kick off the home stand, but it's still a Sacramento team that they struggled against, even without uh, without uh, Demarcus Cousins. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question now is, our Spurs fans should be hovering over the panic button, or should they be having, hovering over the concern button? Uh, they should be over the concern button, but the way the mindset of the, I would say the average Spurs fan is, they've already been smashing that panic button since December <laughs> yeah. with their head. I mean, yeah. they've been screaming because this is just, this is unknown to them. Right. Uh, I, I'm with you. I think they should be hovering over concern, but let's just say they even make the postseason. Let's just okay. say they move up, okay? They don't, maybe they don't get a four spot. They get five on down. Right. I don't think this team can win on the road two road series in route to hopefully defending the title. This team cannot build, is not built that way. You I, look at the past championships, they've had home court advantage. Right. I, I'll say this. Uh, they have not been great on the road this season, but teams past, including last year's team, was the best road team. Right. And they were, put, they were putting out prolific records out on the road. That's still in their back pocket. Yeah, right. they haven't been great this season, but... You still have to beat the San Antonio Spurs four times. Yeah. That's a tall task. Yeah, I don't care is, how much they're struggling. Yeah, that is a tall task, you know. And, well, those are our thoughts on the Spurs right now. Is it doom and gloom in San Antonio? Is this it? Are we seeing finally the end of the run? It's well, chaos. It's chaos. Yeah, see, yeah, exactly. It's that right now. But go out to Friday. Tim Duncan has chaos. By the way, maybe, maybe what they should do have a turning point. The turnaround is maybe maybe we can ask Aaron Prime to pull a Marco Bellinelli and uh, pose uh, semi-nude. No, no, no. Okay. no, that ain't gonna happen, ladies. Sorry. I want, I want to be back on, you know, in front of the camera and <laughs> yeah. be able to show my face again. Yeah, if you've ever and seen... that's just show my face, nothing else. All By right? the way, if, you're, just... if you thought one spur was not gonna post seminar, I didn't think Marco was gonna do it. But go out to ProjectSpurs.com, go check out that crazy photo as well as 
all things uh, Spurs right now, you know, from this show to articles, from, I mean, you name <laughs> it, we got it covered, even the overseas guys. So, again, ProjectSpurs.com. And don't forget to go out to NewsForSanAntonio.com and, of course, Fox29SanAntonio.com. But for Aaron Prine, I'm Jeff Garcia. Thanks again for watching this episode of the Spurs Roundtable. Check out the Spurs cast.